Hi, um, today we'll be discussing the seven mode shapes for the guitar, okay? Um, I call them mode shapes and I stress this idea that they're the shapes of the modes because they aren't necessarily the modes. Remember, the mode is dependent on the root chord of the key you're in. And all seven of these shapes become one mode dependent on that root chord, okay? If you don't understand that, you'll have to go back and review some of the recent previous videos. But right now, I just want to give you the mode uh, shape scales. And you're going to notice that in my system, all seven of these modes always start with the index finger, the first finger. And there's a reason for that. You'd be practicing 21 different scales if you did it otherwise. And when I explain, maybe you'll understand. Uh, let me let me s start with um, let's say I have the a G Ionian mode, which is the G sketch, basically the G major scale. Now I'm only doing this in one octave for now. You're going to have it in two octaves by the time we're done. Now, if I were to start. Uh, the second mode using my middle finger, the next mode up using my middle finger. You notice that I still have this finger available for that note. So to do the Dorian mode with the middle finger would be redundant. It's already contained inside of this first shape. The same thing as if I had started the Phrygian mode, the third step, with the pinky. There's these two notes that still come from the first, this first mode shape. So you always start with the first finger, thereby eliminating uh, 14 uh, shapes, that you, extra shapes you'd have to do. They're all contained, as soon as you start with the first finger, these other fingers that would start the modes are contained in this first one. So you don't have to worry about that. So uh, the first mode shape is, we're going to do the modes of the key of G. First mode shape starts at the third fret and we want to go whole step, whole step. Now you notice I'm using my middle finger here, not my third finger. Many guys default to, but I see I already made a mistake there because my picky really has a big stretch there. Now I'm going to leave it up to, I always leave it up to my students to decide what is, what is the favored fingering. Like I showed this fingering to a student today and he preferred this. First, second, Oh, by the way, the numbers of the fingers, in case you don't know this, are 1, 2, 3, 4. T for thumb, but your index finger is 1, middle finger 2, ring finger 3, pinky 4. So now, um, uh, all right, so we have this uh, G Ionian mode, and we were talking about the fingering. If you want to do a check, Notice I have to stretch from the first finger to the middle finger to get to this note, right? I don't have to stretch here, that makes it easier, but then I have to stretch these two fingers, right? And that's a harder stretch, so the stronger fingers, I feel, should do the stretch first to second and then pinky, because if you try to do a trill between the pinky and the middle finger this way, it's a lot easier than if you did it with the third finger. You could feel the strain. So this is the way I do it. Now, by the way, I'm going to, um, in the description of this video, I'm going to provide a download link off of my Google Drive where you can download uh, the neck graphs of these seven shapes I'm about to show you. It's not in tablature, it's a visual representation, just like a chord graph. Um, most people I uh, present the scales to in this way uh, understand it, they get it. Um, when you use tablature, <coughs> you don't really have a visual to look at. You have to think, okay, second fret, fifth fret, this sort of thing. But with a, a, a chord style graph using scales, you can actually physically see the shape of the scale. And that's very helpful for visualization, of course, right? So um, for the G Ionian scale, we're going to start on the G note, third fret, stretch to the middle finger, fifth fret, stretch to the pinky, seventh fret. This action, will be mirrored on the A string, so you're going to do the same thing from the 3rd fret. So now we have... Then we bring the 1st finger in to the 4th fret, 
all right, and we go finger one, finger two, finger four, and we again mirror that on the next string. So far we have whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step. Now the next move is slightly, it's gonna feel weird because you're gonna bring your middle finger down to the fifth fret, then the pinky, and then the first finger. All right? And you could, if you want to continue up, I usually stop at the octave. I want to make it really clear that this is the position we're starting from. Now, there's another way to do this two octave shape, and that's what I call the three, uh, three, uh, three notes per string uh, way of doing it. Like if you count the notes, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, but here you have one, two, and then three comes on to the next string, two, three. So why, um, this is what's called uh, staying in position. You're staying, at, you're using the third fret very strongly as your gravity point. Now the other uh, style of doing this is three notes per string. And uh, the way you do it is you, you do it exactly the way you just did it up to the G string. But now we're going to move our first finger over to the fifth fret of the B string and go first, third, pinky, and then reflect that again on the E string, first, third, pinky. Now you have, notice we're out of position. We were here, now we're here. So. Now what's the advantage of, uh, of these of the different ways of doing it? Well, for uh, if you have an overdriven electric guitar, of course the, um, uh, the neck becomes very sensitive. Uh, pickups are very sensitive to the sound of the string. So if you were to just simply hammer onto a note, even though it's quiet on the acoustic, it'd be really noticeable on the electric. So what you could do with the three notes per string scale is double hammers. I'm picking once but hammering twice, right? That's for like, uh, uh, Joe Satriani does this kind of stuff like double hammering. That's where he gets the speed from in this case. And you can reverse it. This is harder to do but double pull-offs, right? So. On an electric guitar, this would be much easier, and of course the notes would really stand out more. So I'm going to be providing with you uh, in that link two different uh, links, all right? One for uh, the in position, and the one that changes position, which I just showed you. All right, I like the idea of mastering both, but I don't want to overwhelm people with scales they have to do. So we started with the first finger of the um, third fret on the G note. Now the Dorian shape, not mode, but shape, uh, starts at the next note of the scale and we're going to start with the middle finger. And that's going to go first finger, third finger, pinky. Then we do a long stretch, a long stretch, a long stretch. Then we drop the middle finger down again, a kind of weird fingering. Middle finger to third. All right. Now these will be, you know, they'll, they'll, it'll feel artificial and uncomfortable when you start executing these really stretchy scales. Don't worry about that that much because when you're actually in the act of improvising, you're going to be moving in different directions and sliding and stuff like that. So you should use it just as a visual template to see where all the notes are. So the A Dorian, fifth fret, first finger, uh, third finger pinky up to the eighth fret, then first finger at the fifth fret, seventh fret, ninth fret, fifth fret, seventh fret, ninth fret, five, seven, nine, seven, eight, five. Uh, Now we could do that again three notes per string style, which is, uh, all right, so let's uh, same up to the G string, so, long 
long stretch, long stretch. Then when we get, instead of putting our middle finger on this note on the B string at the seventh fret, first finger, go first, second, fourth, first, second, fourth. Okay. Uh, the third one, the Phrygian shape. We start, these are all starting on Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, each degree of the scale, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. So we go to the B note, and we go first to middle to fourth, that's uh, seventh, eighth, and tenth, seventh, ninth, tenth, seventh, ninth, tenth, seven, nine, seven, eight, ten. So we get... this particular one, the Phrygian shape. Remember, this could use for, be used for any of the seven modes, depending on the chord progression. So this one, there's no stretches. It's nice and easy to... Uh, it's nice and easy to, to get through. All right, now we come to the Lydian shape. This is 8th um, fret, 10th fret, 12th fret. Now we bring our first finger in to this F sharp at the 9th fret. First finger, ninth fret, middle finger, tenth fret, pinky, twelfth. Now, the one we just did, we just repeat that on the next string. The next string we go, on the G string, we go ninth, eleventh, twelfth. So that's slightly different shape. Then you drop the middle finger down to the B string, tenth, twelfth, eighth. So now we get... If you started this on this G note, one, two, three, four, five steps up, you get your G major scale from the, that right there. So maybe you can see how the modes are embedded in each one of these shapes. All right, now we have the all-important Mixolydian mode shape, and this is a long stretch, 10th fret, 12th fret, 14th, and we do this three times. Now we bring our first finger in on the G string to the 11th fret, go 1st, 2nd, pinky, then drop our middle finger to the 12th fret, middle finger, pink, uh, middle finger, 3rd finger at the uh, 13th fret, and then finally the 10th, and that is... Uh, actually, I have to go back to the Lydian shape, uh, actually I have to go back to Phrygian because I didn't show you the three notes. Uh, per scale versions of those. So I'll do these real quick because they will be on the chart so you can look at them there. Uh, the Phrygian three notes per scale, uh, three notes per scale, three notes per string. All right, so um, we proceed with the Phrygian the same way up to the G string. So. 7th, 8th, 10th fret, 7th, 9th, 10, 7, 9, 10, then 1st finger, 7, 9, 11, alright, then we shift over to the 8th fret and do two long ones, alright, now from the Phrygian shape, to do three notes per string, 8th, 10th, 12th, 9th, 10th, 12th, 9, 10, 12th, 9, 11, 12th, then 10, 12, 13, 10, 12, 14. Now, uh, the Mixolydian, um, three notes per string, so remember, these are three long in a row. Now, when we get here to the G string, at the 14th fret, we shift our first finger over changing positions, and we'll be at the 12th fret. We go 12, 13, 15, 12, 14, 15.
that was the D mixolydian shape. And why D mixolydian shape? We're starting on the D note of the G scale. The next one is Aeolian, and first the uh, uh, non-position changing shape. All right, so we go 12th to 14th to 15th, 12, 14, 15. Now we do the stretch, 12, 14, 16, 12, 14, 16, 13, 15, 12. The three notes per string version of that. You better have a cutaway on your guitar because you're going to run out of room. All right, so uh, we proceed to the G string as we did before, but now on the G string we're going to add another note. Instead of going, we're going using the pinky. Then we move position to the 13th fret on the B string and that's one of the long ones so it's whole step whole step then we go to the 14th fret of the E string 15 and 17 alright so we get Finally, the Locrian, and what I'm going to do is, this is an F sharp note, I'm going to bring it down an octave to here. So, um, uh, alright, so we're starting on the F sharp, that's T to Do, and um, we're at the second fret, and we're going first finger, second finger, fourth finger, at the second, third, and fifth frets. Repeat that on the next string. Then on the next string, we drop our first finger down and go 2nd fret, 4th fret, 5th fret, 2nd fret, 4th fret, 5th fret. So you see we have mirror images between pairs of strings on this one. We have, and we do the same exact thing on the next string. Now we go 1, third, one 3, 4, 1st, 3rd, 4th finger, 1st, 3rd, 4th finger. Then we drop the middle down, pinky, to F sharp. Now to get the three notes per string version of that. And the cool thing about this is every pair of string reflects, um, they reflect each other. So in other words, we're going first, second, and fourth on the E string. We're going to do the same thing on the A string, first, second, and fourth. Next we're going to go first, third, fourth twice on the D and G strings. Then we're going to shift out of position, first finger, do the long stretch. That's third, fifth, seventh, and then third, fifth, seventh again. So each pair is an exact duplicate in terms of the fingering. Now some people know the major scale starting with their middle finger. Well that's encompassed within the Locrian shape. So. You don't have to practice the G major scale starting with the middle finger because all you got to do is practice a locally shape that G major starting with the middle finger will be embedded within that scale. I hope this makes sense to you. Now, I have to introduce to you a very, very important concept which we'll be hitting on a lot over time during this series and that is uh, parallel versus relative. These are very, very important concepts in music. They run through all of music theory. And of course, typical of um, music school, they didn't quite, uh, how do I say, they didn't quite fully explain all of this stuff. So I'm relative and parallel in, uh, in music school is just a very, very basic, basic idea, but really it's a very intense idea. Um, and it's understood in different ways in the Greek modes as opposed to the major minor key system. So um, again, we'll be touching a lot on this concept of relative versus parallel. The easiest, simplest explanation or definition of relative and parallel is relative means within the key. So you're within the key you're in. All these seven modes I just did are relative to the key of G. They're all the notes of the key of G starting on a different degree of the scale. Therefore, they're relative to each other. Now, in classical theory, they say um, there's such thing as the relative minor scale, and that's the only reference they make to relative. But 
relative concept is a bigger, wider thing. It doesn't refer to just one scale. Within the Greek modes, it certainly doesn't refer to just one scale shape. Um, so relative means within the key, all right? Parallel means simply different keys, all right? So now, remember the triangle of musical excellence. You start with coordination, that's physical uh, memory, muscle memory. So first you're aiming for that. When you do these modes, uh, mode shapes, you want to just get it so you can do them automatically, so your muscles remember everywhere to go to do these. Once you've mastered that, that's the physical skill. Now we've got to go into the intellectual skill. All right, and the intellectual skill involves um, going parallel. In other words, if I took the, uh, the G major scale, here's one octave just to save time, and then I took the D mixolydian scale, which is from the key of G, it's the notes of the key of G on the 10th fret, um, the fifth step of the scale, if I brought this mixolydian shape down here to the G note where I started, I get a totally different key now. Because why? This was the fifth step of the key of G, but if I bring it down here, this is now the fifth step of some other key, which uh, in this case happens to be uh, the key of C. Um, all right, so here's the thing, though. This is what you do to develop the intellectual part of this, the intellectual understanding of this stuff. What you do is you compare all three major modes to each other. I'm just going to do it in one octave, but if you do it in two and make the comparison, you'll see between the different uh, major modes, there's only one note difference between these modes. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Lydian shape from the fourth step of the scale, the Mixolydian shape from the uh, fifth step of the scale, and I'm going to play them all on the third fret. So here's the Ionian shape, the basic G major scale. Now, if I do the Mixolydian shape, which was up here, but I do it down here, there's going to be a note difference. The Ionian hit an F sharp up there, but the Mixolydian hits an F natural. Now, as it stands, that's a C scale. What I just did is a C major scale starting on the G note, okay? Now, if I do the Lydian shape and compare it to the other shapes, here is uh, Ionian, which is the major scale. And you're going to notice there's a slight difference between Ionian and Lydian. sound kind of exotic all right and where that step is changing is the fourth step where in the Ionian major scale we get in Lydian we get so the fourth step becomes raised in fact any scale or chord that has a sharp four in it is called a, a Lydian scale or a Lydian uh, chord um, don't want to go too much into that right now. We, we could do that in the future. Um, there's a whole theory of, of an entire chord encompassing a particular mode. Uh, if you look, it's really deep stuff he does, but uh, Rick Beato, B-E-A-T-O, has a YouTube channel. He's a remarkable music theorist, a little above even my head, to tell you the truth. I'm not, I'm not particularly into his um, these mode chords. But, uh, they, they're a little too far out and they, they miss some certain principles that I, I would say causes a lot of dissonance but you know he's a, he's kind of like a heavy producer and he does like uh, movie production and stuff like that as well so like in terms of music for movies so you know you need that kind of abstracted sound myself I'm a more pop guy I like pop music so I stay conservative with the rules all right so if we were to compare the three major modes all right the one that starts on the first step, the one that starts at the fourth step, Lydian, the one that starts at the fifth step, Mixolydian, okay. Um, did I even give you the mode names? I don't know if I gave you the mode names, but they're easy to look up on the net. Um, uh, let's see if I can do something about this glare. Well, that makes it worse. That's even worse. Uh, maybe. Yeah, okay. 
All right, yeah. The sun, the quality of the sun in California is like an x-ray machine. It's, I call it the x-ray sun. All right, so what, what I just did was compare the three major modes. Now, how do you know they're major? Well, you have to compare the first note to the third note of the scale. If it's two whole steps from the first note, that's a major scale. If it's a step and a half, a whole step and a half step, the third note to the first note, the first note to the third note is a step and a half. That's minor, okay? Real simple. The same with chords. All right, so we'll notice that the difference between Mixolydian and the standard major scale called Ionian. is the seventh step becomes flatted. So you could say the Mixolydian scale is a major scale with a flat seventh. Now, with the Lydian, same notes as the, as the basic G major scale, except the fourth step becomes raised. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. This uh, uh, G Lydian, we're starting on the G note, making a Lydian shape, comes from the key of D. All right, this will, I know you guys have a hard time with this. G Lydian, what key does it come from? Well, you have to think the Lydian step is the fourth step of some key. What key has a G as the fourth step? We're starting on the G note, right? So we're doing G Lydian. G must be the fourth step of some scale, and indeed it is. It's the fourth step of the D major scale. And in fact, if I do the D Lydian in two octaves, the G Lydian in two octaves, <laughs> And I eliminated the first four notes, and I just started here. Notice I'm starting on a D note. That gives us the Do Re Mi scale in the key of D, the D Ionian scale. So this comparison is very important for something down the line for improvisation I call neighborhood playing. Uh, I'll give you a quick example. If I needed to, um, let's see. Let's see. I, I needed, well, I mean this example right here, let's see. I needed to jump from the key of G to the key of C because that's what the chords were doing in the song, jumping from the key of G to the key of C. Well, here's my G scale. I don't want to jump all the way up here to grab my C scale. It's just artificial and feels weird to do a sudden jump all the way on the neck while you're improvising, right? So a very simple little change. And that one little note change brings us to the key of C, okay? Switching the F sharp for the F. All right, I hope this is becoming clear. Uh, next is to compare the minor modes, and in this case, uh, it's a little intense because you want to use the Locrian mode as well, which is a, a quasi-minor mode. Um, but first, let's look at the first three um, um, uh, minor mode types, Dorian, Phrygian, and uh, Aeolian. Dorian is the second step, Phrygian is the third step, in this case of the key of G, and uh, Aeolian is the sixth step of the key of G here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these shapes that belonged on different parts of the neck and bring them all uh, to this fifth fret here. So first, with the Dorian, which, sits in, which is the natural uh, mode for the key of G, <laughs> That's Dorian. Now, you'll notice there's just a slight difference between Dorian. Now I'm going to do uh, Aeolian. Now, what, what is the difference, the sixth step in this case? One, two, three, four, five, six is Dorian. But um, Aeolian is one, two, three, four, five, six. Six becomes flat in the uh, Aeolian when you compare it to Dorian, okay? Now, uh, um, if we do uh, Phrygian, that's the third step of some key. Phrygian is based on the third step of some key. Well, three, two, one, or mi, re, do. When you do a Phrygian scale at the fifth fret, it's an F major scale starting at its third degree. So uh, I'm going to compare the A Dorian scale with the um, Actually, I'm going to compare the A Dorian scale to the A Aeolian scale. So here's Aeolian. Right? And uh, all right, now 
let's see if there, what the differences and similarities are. First we have... Then we have this. So the, the difference here is that the uh, Phrygian uh, mode shape, the second note is flatted compared to the Aeolian mode shape. problem of Locria. Now, let's see if we could kind of tie things up a little. Um, the Dorian and the Aeolian both have a natural whole step from the, one, from the first note of the scale. So that's where they're similar. And so in this regard, you might co uh, consider comparing the Phrygian, to, uh, which is the third step of the scale, to the Locrian, which is the seventh scale of some key. So um, this is Locrian, uh, uh, this is uh, Phrygian, and here's Locrian. What's the difference? Well, the fifth step of uh, Phrygian becomes flatted with the Locrian. One, two, three, four, five. Now we get an E flat there. Okay. So that's comparing um, the minor shapes with the minor shapes, the major shapes with the major shapes. Why is this important? For many reasons. Um, if you're going along, you know, doing a major scale, and suddenly you need to jump to this, the same root but mixolydian, you could do it right there by knowing the one note difference that you need to make. So that makes things, you know, quick. For quick changing. Also, again, something I'm going to reflect upon uh, when we do pentatonic theory, which pentatonic theory is, is, let me do a side note here, pentatonic theory is a shorthand and it's a lot simpler than the seven Greek modes. But you, you'd think that I would have given you that early on since it's simpler, but actually you need some of this basics to, uh, to, uh, to do this correctly. So, uh, in fact, I have to go into the major minor key system before you can understand pentatonic theory. But trust me, the pentatonic theory will be a whole lot less dense. And there's like cool little visual techniques on the guitar to be able to get through these. Okay. Now, here is the ultimate practice of the seven mode shapes. Now, remember the triangle. First, you start with coordination. So what you do is you take the shapes and do them as I, I show you on the chart in their positions. Okay. That's relative, because why? It's all the same seven notes of the G major scale in different positions. Now, the parallel practice, when you, you move from the coordination part of the triangle to the theory part of the triangle, this is when we get into theory. And in fact, even comparing major modes to major modes like I just did, minor modes to minor modes like I just did, that's theoretical too. That's theory stuff too. But here's the ultimate practice. It's called parallel practice. And remember, parallel means different keys. So if I play the G Ionian, which is the basic Do Re Mi scale, in two octaves, all right? And then I have, of course, at the fifth fret, my Dorian shape. But what I'm going to do now is move my Dorian shape back to this G note. Now what that does is, the Dorian shape was here in the key of G, but when I move it here, it's from the key of F now. The Dorian step is a whole step from the beginning note of the key. So now this is the key of F, if I do the Dorian shape. So here's uh, Ionian, just one octave to save time, then Dorian. Then if I uh, the Phrygian shape for the key of G is at the seventh fret, but if I bring the Phrygian shape to where I started on the G note, now I'm going to develop. I'm going to bring about the key of E flat. All right, the Lydian shape at the um, C note at the eighth fret. If I bring it down here, remember C Lydian is from the key of G, but if I bring C Lydian down to a G root, I'm going to be in a different key. And the key I'll be in is actually D major. So now I've done 
So far, let's go through this. Ionian, G major. Dorian, F major. Phrygian, E flat major. Lydian, D major. Then if I do Mixolydian, that will be from C major. Then finally, uh, then Aeolian will be um, key of B flat major. Then finally, Locrian is the key of e flat, A flat major. So what you're doing now is learning to be in different keys by going through all of these. And again, this is what's, if you really suss this out and get it down, you're going to improve yourself as far as getting around and knowing what to do. Now, so far the theory is about, well, what key is this mode from if I move it over to the third fret? But later on down the line, it will become much more um, useful for, for certain operations on the guitar. This is like a tool, all right? So um, to demonstrate how this practice would go, moving from the coordination point, which is doing all the scales in relative, right, all the shapes in relative, now we're doing them in parallel by starting on the same fret for each shape. What I do as a practice is I tell myself the name of the mode that I'm doing and the key that the mode is coming from. So I'm going to demonstrate a G Ionian from the key of G. G Dorian from the key of from the key of F. E Phrygian from the key of E flat. Uh, this is uh, G Lydian from the key of uh, D. This is G Mixolydian from the key of C. This is G Aeolian from the key of B flat. And finally, this is uh, G Locrian from the key of A flat major. Now, Say you get these down in muscle memory. What I always tell my students is, look, get them down in muscle memory and use them as a visual matrix to work off of. You don't have to use these. Uh, let me put it this way. I gravitate to a few uh, scale shapes, and those are the ones I generally use the most. Like, I don't do all of these all the time when I'm performing or improvising. However, I have the visual matrix, so I can easily move between any of the shapes, no problem, if I wanted to. However, when I do the Phrygian shape, there's no stretching, right? I love this shape because all, all the fingers fall right into place. Nice and easy, um, and it's very easy for me. The Phrygian shape is the third step of some key. That means two whole steps back must be my key. Whole step, whole step. Yeah, e, uh, B Phrygian is from the key of G. So um, it, comparing the, the major modes to the minor modes, that's one thing you could do to develop your cultivate your intellect as regards to these. And secondly, to do pure parallel, which means take all the modes and stick them on one fret, name what key you're, on, what key you're in, and uh, what, uh, what mode shape you're using. All right, and that's basically, I usually tell people when I'm improvising, I think three things at once. If I'm scale improvising, these days I'm not improvising with scales as much as I am with um, arpeggios, because Arpeggios are pulled out of scales, and for me to work an arpeggio, I know, like, if, I, you know, if I'm on an F7 chord and I play an F7 arpeggio, I know it's going to work. So then that gives me a, a lot of safety for not hitting a clam, and it also gives me time to think of, well, what other steps from the scale now can I use? All right. Uh, this all happens at light speed because everything is done with visualization. Remember, the speed of sound is the words in your head. The speed of sound is way slower than the speed of light, which is your eyes, what you visualize, okay? So the more you visualize these shapes, the better off you are. Again, a piece of advice I give my students, if you have a chord or a scale or an arpeggio that's, uh, that you're practicing but don't yet have in muscle memory, once you go through it, close your eyes and picture yourself doing it. Picture your fingers on the neck, and I guarantee you that will speed up the brain sending the image to your fingers and your muscles reacting and going ahead and doing that particular scale or shape. All right, now, um, is that all we needed to do today? I think this is all we needed to do. My next video is going to be furthering um, harmony in the Greek modes, 
However, uh, it's going to get a little deeper. Now we're going to start building extended chords and stuff like this at the first level, the first level being the Greek modes. And we're going to learn things about um, certain things they never taught you in music school, something I call the minor ninth rule, which is very, very important for chord construction. And the idiots at music school didn't tell me this. Uh, I had to figure it out for myself. Um, you will not find the minor ninth rule in any frickin' school, okay? But it's essentially important, all right? And uh, you're going to get that in the next, uh, in the next uh, video. Uh, so we'll be dealing here yeah, with chord construction. When you start building fatter and fatter chords by adding notes on, you get more of a jazz style chord. So, you know, I could have a C major chord, or could I have a C major 13 chord? Whoa, big difference. They both function the same way, though. They both act as a C major chord. Whether you do a basic C or a C major 13, they will both act the same way. Quick example, I, I sing London Bridge is Falling Down on a C chord. Da, 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 da. C major. C major 13. Da, 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 da. Yeah, it's, a, a, it's the same thing, but it's fatter, it's got more cushion to it, it's richer, jazzier. All right, and don't forget, Bach was hitting on chords like this, sneaking them through. So these are real chords that are uh, expected nowadays to be in music. Okay, that's it for today. I did not expect to go 40 minutes at all with this. Um, I, again, I will have online the links to download the charts for the in position mode shapes and the three notes per string mode shapes. You can choose one or the other, but if you want to be a master, choose both and practice both. That's it for today. Have a good one, you guys. Love you.